Hey, thanks for joining me for this video. Uh, in our last video, we worked on calculating the annual percentage rate in a very simple form, and the example I gave you uh, was very, very simple. In this video, which is gonna be kind of a part two, we're gonna build upon that, and we're gonna add in an additional element that is actually a little bit more realistic for calculating APR in everyday life, and that is the number of terms in the actual loan itself. Uh, and so um, we're gonna be using that with a different formula to get a APR figure, again, with a little bit more information that is a little bit more realistic for everyday life. Uh, so for, for starters, let's go ahead and walk through this, this new formula here. Uh, and we're still gonna be calculating APR, so that hasn't changed. We're really trying to figure out uh, the rate that we're paying in totality for a particular loan. The difference is, uh, is uh, we have obviously access to a little bit more information. So APR is gonna be equal to two times N times I divided by our principal multiplied by N plus one. So we've got a couple of additional elements here. So let me kind of walk through and explain these. We know what APR is. That's obviously what we're solving for. So the first thing is the small n. And notice there's a small and big n. There is a difference between the two. Uh, so the small n is actually the number of payments in a year period. So this is commonly 12 most loans work off of a monthly cycle, but if you're using something a little bit less common, then obviously you'll wanna take that into consideration with this formula here. What I show is I is gonna be what we call the total cost of credit. In our last video, the finance charge that we calculated, which was the interest that we paid plus the service charge, essentially represented the total cost of credit, or in this case, I. P in this formula is gonna be our principal. So that's the amount that we're gonna borrow. Big N is gonna be the total number of payments to actually pay off the loan. So for example, if you were getting a vehicle loan and you were going for a four-year loan, the number of payments that you would have to pay off the loan would be 48 since you're paying you know, one every single month for four years. And that's it. So let's walk through a scenario using the formula to perform the calculation so you can see how this works. Once we know the variables, everything is just plugging it in and then solving, of course. So let's assume uh, that we're borrowing, uh, let's say, 3,000. So I'm going to use the correct abbreviations here. So we're going to say P for principal equals 3,000. And we are going to uh, pay over the year period, over one year, a total of, let's say, $200 in interest but we also have a service charge of $27. So that's something that we'll also have to factor in. And this is gonna be monthly, so our total number of periods in a year is gonna be 12. And just to keep things simple, we're also gonna have big N will also equal 12. So this is just a one year loan, keeping things simple. Again, you'll wanna modify this depending upon how long your loan is. If it's a three-year loan, 36 payments, four years, 48, so on and so forth. But regardless of what the number is, you'll be able to understand how to do the calculations. Uh, so let's go ahead and start filling this in. So the first thing we're gonna do is fill in the top part of the formula. That's gonna be two times 12 times, well, we have to figure out something real quick. So we know that I is the total cost of credit. We know that that is a combination of the interest that we pay and any other payments or fees associated with the loan. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these two numbers together, 227, to get 227. And this represents our total cost of credit for the entire year period. Now we're gonna divide that by what is our principal, which is the $3,000 that we borrowed for the loan and we're gonna multiply that by the number of payments in the actual loan, which is 12, plus one. So we're gonna start just solving one portion at a time. So 12 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 227 is actually 5,448. And feel free to pause and calculate the, the, or calculate the problem on your own uh, just to see if we end up at the same place. And we're gonna divide that 
by 3,000 multiplied by 13, or 12 plus 1 multiplied by 3,000, and that's going to give us 39,000. Now, if you take 5,441 divided by 39,000, you should get something along the lines of 0.13969. I'm going to stop at that decimal place. Uh, so if you were rounding, for example, to the nearest tenth, which or hundredth for that matter, uh, you should end up with 14%, because remember, APR is commonly expressed in a percentage form. So let's look at kind of what, what the meaning of this is. So what we were trying to figure out is on a one-year loan with monthly payments, uh, borrowing $3,000 and paying $200 over the one-year period with a $27 service charge, our APR, our annual percentage rate, effectively is 14% over that period. Now then we can take this figure and then we can compare it to some of the other costs of credit, other loans that we have to see if we're actually uh, competitive with what we're paying on our particular loan. But remember, the important things are, again, making sure that you express the correct number of periods, uh, commonly 12. But this big end figure where a lot of people get tripped up is this is not the same as the number of periods. Instead, this is really the total number of payments in the actual loan itself. So make sure that you draw the distinction between those two. In this example, we kept them both the same. It was a one-year loan with monthly payments, but by and large, many loans are typically spread out over a longer period of time. So you wanna make sure and take that into account when performing your own calculations.